Hey guys, Pixelated Pope here, and I wanted to give you a somewhat brief, uh, hopefully short, uh, tutorial on how to use my uh, retro palette swapper that I just posted to the YoYo Games Marketplace. Uh, it's a very common problem uh, in a lot of people's games, especially those with a more retro aesthetic, uh, pixel art, and all that good stuff, uh, where you've got a character that you want to change the color of their clothes, the color of their hair, uh, anything like that, the color of their weapon, uh, and then you start making all of these different sprites. You start duplicating the art, changing the colors, saving it out as a different sprite, uh, and it becomes a nightmare very, very quickly. So obviously with the palette swap shader, the idea is to make your sprite once, and then just change the color programmatically. Uh, so, I mean, if you've looked at the little trailer, you can see there's lots of possibilities, like gradually changing colors, stuff like that. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, you're probably more interested in just, uh, you know, swapping, swapping the color. All right, still a few more coins. There we go. So you can see that. Uh, just as a quick demo, I've got lots of animations, uh, and I use the sword color is unique in the palette, so I can change the sword color without affecting anything else about it. Uh, I can change his clothes, and the sword color remains the same. And I support all nine combinations of clothing and, and weapon. Uh, just because my palette was set up properly. Uh, so you can also see a little, hopefully see the blinking on his sword. That's done programmatically as well with a custom palette. It swaps between a custom palette and a non-custom palette very rapidly uh, that changes the blade color. So it's all about organizing your palette, knowing what's in your palette, and uh, understanding how your palette and your uh, sprite uh, work together. So let's jump over to Game Maker real fast. Okay, let's see. Hold on, I get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so uh, so you can see, I mean, this is a ludicrous amount of sprites, and this is just for a single character, and every one of these sprites has, you know, animations, and 9, 12 frames of animations on some of these. Uh, I mean, there's a few that's only, you know, one frame or uh, you know two frames but regardless that is an immense amount of art and you don't want to have duplicates and certainly not nine copies of this in your project uh, all you want to have is this so the way that the system works is this far left column represents every unique color that shows up in your base sprite so you may notice that there's the this is this hair right here that's that's link's pink hair from link to the past and i've chosen in my palettes to uh to never show that it's blonde in fact this palette is never seen in the game it's only used when i draw uh, uh draw the sprite it finds that color when it's about to when it's about to draw it to the screen and replaces it with the color of the palette that I've told it to. So the column represents palette one, palette two, palette three, palette zero is your base. Uh, and you can see that I've got three columns for every set of clothes because each one has the different swords. There's the wooden sword with the green handle, white sword with the blue handle, and master sword with the red blade. And that's just duplicated over and over again. So, you know, when I have uh, the green clothes and the master sword, I'm using palette three. Zero, one, two, three, and when I have the master, uh, the the red clothes with the wooden sword, that is palette zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this palette here is uh, sprite getting or uh, link getting hit. So when he gets knocked back and he flashes red, I don't just use an image blend. That looks so boring and it looks so. Uh, I mean, it, it's great for prototyping, but. It, it, it lacks a lot of punch. You don't get that cool contrast. Uh, I've got one of these for every monster 
uh, that I that I have in my game, and some they're totally different. Like I've got a red monster. He doesn't flash red. He flashes orange. I've got a blue monster that are you know the the uh, the Stalfos. Uh, so he's got a palace red. It's a much much more simple. So Stalfos are not nearly as complicated. They're only four colors. Uh, so he flashes bright red because he's a white skeleton and or or a red skeleton or a gold skeleton and that looks that's really eye-catching uh, especially since you're flashing it so rapidly it has to be a stark contrast uh, to uh, what the base sprite looks like so what this all comes down to is how do you get this right you need this to work with the system and if you don't have that the system's not going to work so uh, i'm going to show you how to do it in photoshop uh, GIMP can probably be used as well. Uh, I don't know GIMP because I've always had Photoshop. Uh, and uh, I, there might be other tools out there. I mean, any any art, uh, pixel art tool has palette, uh, palette options and features. Uh, there might even be an online, I haven't even looked at for this. That seems kind of silly now. There's probably an online tool that you drop, you know, upload this image and it'll kick out here's all uh, here's a grid of all the unique colors that appear in this sprite uh any any pixel artist worth their salt is is gonna be pretty comfortable with this uh this concept so let me go into photoshop here and we're gonna build the palette sprite for mr beholder here uh so uh here's kind of my process for it although all right, after this, I'm going to go look up and see if there's an online tool that does this for me. But either way, you want to, you, you eventually will want some control over this because we're going to organize our palette logically. We're going to group colors together, and so building alternate palettes is a breeze once you've got your base palette. So let me show you what tools we're using. I've got the pencil brush uh, with a, let me reset that to, Black. So I've got a pe one pixel pe uh, pencil brush, so no anti-aliasing at all, obviously. Uh, we're going to be using the magic wand tool uh, with a tolerance of zero, no anti-aliasing, never anti-aliasing, and uh, contiguous unchecked. So as I select colors, it selects all instances of those colors rather than just the small group, the local group of, of that color. I want all instances of that color across my entire sprite. Uh, and the sprite you pick to do this should have as many, if not all, of the colors that your sprite uses. Uh, so, I mean, you, you need to know all of the colors that your sprite will ever use. Uh, so, uh, that's pretty much the tools. So, let's, I'm going to make a new layer, uh, hide the other one. And this is kind of a backup in case I screw something up. Uh, so, I duplicated that then make a new layer, and this is where we're gonna build our palette. So I'm gonna zoom in as close as I can, and I'm gonna use Alt to get the little eyedropper guy, grab a color, and draw it over there. Then grab a color, draw it over there. I like my really dark, my extremes, my black and my whites uh, to be at the top, but you organize it how you want. So now I'm just gonna go through and get kind of the major sections and start light to dark. So I'm going to grab his highlight color, his mid-tone, and his, sh uh, his kind of shadowy color. Uh, and, then, and then just so I can keep track of what's going on, I'm going to select all those with the magic wand holding shift and just clicking on the different colors and delete them. And this is why we made a backup. Uh, so now I know what colors are left. So now let's do this kind of sickly brown highlight. Again, with just the alt tool using the, the, or the eyedropper uh, and I can select it just looks like it's just two colors yep just two colors so now we're getting down to the uh, uh, oh I guess I can delete my whites and my blacks as well since I already took those uh, let's get this this red yuckiness around his eyes and gums and teeth and all that so alt click alt click just, oh, is that the same color? That's the same color. 
Uh, let's grab his teeth at the same time because they're basically the same color. And delete. Oh, and you can see I made a mistake. I accidentally drew that on that sprite. So I'm just going to move that back up. Hit Control E and flatten that. So now it's part of the palette. And now I can delete the reds. Okay, and then finally, I'm not going to uh, the uh, I'm not going to palletize all of these eyes because that's a lot of work, and I already did it. And uh, it's in the uh, this sprite comes with the asset, uh, so uh, I'm just going to grab these last two colors from uh, kind of the whites of his eyes. And then, did it again. There we go, doing it again. All right, and then we can delete those. And that just leaves the all these irises, which I'm not going to mess with. So you've got this one pixel wide strip of colors. So now you want to make an alternate palette. I mean, this this is our base. This is what's needed. This is the sprite as it will appear in my game asset list, just like Link is using his base Link to the Past colors with his funny pink hair. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate this layer, duplicate my palette layer, shift that over one pixel, so you can see it's now I got a double wide palette here, and then flatten these two together with Control E. So now if I collapse everything else, uh, the palette and the sprite are on the same layer. So now I can use the magic wand, grab these colors, and you can see it's grabbing all of him. And uh, again, uh, a real artist will want to build these color palettes by hand, right? They'll probably use a similar method, but probably only replace one color at a time because they want to use color, uh, proper color ramping. Uh, all that fun pixel art goodness. Uh, we're going to do it the quick and dirty way, though, uh, because this is supposed to be a quick tutorial, and it's quickly becoming long. So uh, Control-U will open up the hue and saturation uh, cheater panel. Uh, so here we can just drag this slider wherever we want and change those red ramp or those, those colors uh, to relative colors. So let's make him this kind of cool red, and now his shadow is all wrong so again magic wand his shadow colors go kind of purpley purple is a good color for shadows now we've got kind of the sick color around his eye let's make that a nice contrasty like a green or something and i can mess with the saturation make that really pop out keep the lightness down a bit and then let's get his gross teeth. And uh, let's make these, actually, let's colorize these and make them kind of yellow, kind of kind of gross, dingy yellow. So you can kind of see it up in the preview window. He's looking pretty gross. And finally, let's grab his eyes and, again, colorize. Let's make these kind of bloodshot gross. And there we go. So let me zoom out. So, and then for a comparison. So pretty cool, huh? Uh, so now what you're left with uh, is you got a good preview of what your sprite's going to look like, but this is what's most important. Bam. You've got a palette sprite. Bring that into Game Maker. Uh, add it as, your, as, as a sprite with... Uh, I don't think the origin matters, but zero zero just to be safe. Uh, and that's when you use pal swap set uh, set palette uh, when it says what's your pal sprite. That's it. You just use that sprite and tell it what column to use, and it'll draw your sprite. Uh, all the code is covered in the example project. Uh, I'm, it's pretty simple, you know. Uh, it can get a little complicated when you start building dynamic palettes, but there's lots of examples of that in the uh, uh, in the in the example project. So hopefully this was useful. Uh, it went a little longer than I wanted it to go.
uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to comment uh, below or uh, post something in the uh, Game Maker subreddit, uh, and uh, I'll definitely see it there. And uh, thanks for watching. Good luck with your game making.